PhD in cognitive neuro neuroscience and master in clinical um, clinical audiology and also certified by American Institute of Balance and also um, my current achievement which is I uh, awarded a Women Scientist Award from Korea since 2005. So basically what we are uh, trying to uh, talk in this, uh, in this uh, sharing is actually update on latest innovations in balance uh, rehabilitation and before we go further actually I just want to uh, discuss where I think management of the balance disorder cases is very challenging and controversial and if we can uh, uh, see here in I think this is a very global uh, world issue same as like <laughs> COVID now which is lots of conflicts and unresolved issues raised by the clinician and researcher in terms of diagnosis and treatment and I think uh, we do have lots of uh, great uh, gadgets or great uh, equipment in terms of diagnosis but the treatment um, is still in a uh, a hard thing, I think, in, even in Malaysia. So, selections of the appropriate treatment of the central and peripheral vestibular disorder are really, really important. Actually, in order to us to help and assist all our patients to reach the desired recovery. And physical exercise actually has been shown to help patients with uh, balance disorder, especially with peripheral vestibular disorder. And if you can see in this slide, uh, actually, this is by the Paula, uh, May, June 2014, it shows that. Um, Majority percentage of the vertigo patient is actually 35.1% and then followed by uh, imbalance which is a very common issue among aging people, elderly where it's 24.3% and also there are also spacing cope which is uh, if you like uh, light headache something like that in 60.2% and if you can see here the rest is like mm -hmm. protein sensation mixed with uh, freezing coke, vertigo and other types. So all these things is actually if we can know that BPPV is one of the most uh, commonest pathology in vestibular disorder and as, as uh, we can discuss further and I think it's well covered I think uh, in the vestibular management and this is uh, another uh, if you can see here BPPV is still uh, among the tops of the uh, diagnosis uh, worldwide and of of course, uh, I don't want to go uh, too long because in this short time, I just want to share what we do or what we have in our practice. And what is a vestibular rehabilitation is actually, uh, if you agree, next to love balance is the most important thing. And because it's really, really give us a great impact in terms of our daily life. Um, uh, we mean like our, in terms of our activities, work and everything. So this is why I think management is much, much very important. So if you can see here, balance control in human is really what we call a complicated and we need a uh, integrations of the vestibular, visual, uh, proprioceptions and also we do have a very, we need to have a good, uh, good input integration by cerebellum cortex and also the uh, brainstem and of course we do have uh, like a motor uh, output uh, which is VOR, uh, motor impulse and also for the motor impulse for our body and pressure which is vestibular spinal reflex. So all these things is actually the basic concept that we really need important uh, in order for us to understand the rehab or vestibular rehabilitation concept. So here is actually I want to emphasize why we are talking about natural phenomena. This is what we call a uh, vestibular composition. This is why we are saying, um, I'm always uh, told my students where I think the natural conversations or natural, uh, promoting the natural vestibular conversation is very, very important, especially in vestibular disorder patients. Of course, I do, I do understand in the beginning or like one week or first week, in very, very uh, acute attack. Of course, we need some medications, but but uh, in certain, in terms of long term, we do need something which is uh, can give us natural phenomenon and also a natural conversations uh, in order for uh, compact to our. We are depending too much to medication, for example. All right. So uh, if you uh, can understand here that there is a four concept, the most important thing in central conversations issues that implies plasticity, formations of the internal model, learnings of limit, and sensory vetting. So if you can see here. Uh, in terms of cerebral conversation, there are several uh, central connections involved. For example, like vestibular ocular reflex, vestibular spinal reflex, vestibular colic reflex, autonomic connection, and all those things. And this is why um, 
there are lots of multiple uh, options of the treatment now if you can see like optokinetics uh, stimulation everything so this is thing that we can discuss further in our next or next slide so uh, before we go further there is a lot of impairment due to the dizziness and there are possibles of abnormality for example like gaze instability so this is you know, very common where people start to have like what we call uh, oscillopsia, people who have vertigo, abnormal perceptions of motions, and also altered perceptions of orientation in space, poor postural alignment, for example, like this is leads to um, fall, you know, a fall, and then inappropriate use of the balance strategies also can lead to the fall in certain uh, dizziness or imbalance patient. And if you can see here, we are not, when we are talking about um, dizziness, it's a very broad and general, and it can uh, manifest from a vestibular disorder, but also can occur from various or other things that we should think. For example, um, uh, cardiovascular, neurological, metabolic, visual, and also uh, visual and also psychological disorders. So this is very, very important for us, uh, for us to have a very uh, broad concept apart from vestibular disorder. And then, um, and of course, uh, sometimes in our patients, the suffering that you see is not the same as the sufferer, suffering that is um, never talked about. For example, that's why, for example, in my clinic, normally I would give some space to my patient at least five to ten minutes to explain actually what their feelings, what they, uh, what's their actual uh, feeling, what their actual uh, impacts in, in, in this uh, in their real situation. So this is why I think uh, you need to give some time to your patients all right before you go further so in terms of vestibular hypotension there will be both it can be unilateral or bilateral and if compared bilateral and unilateral of course bilateral is much more complicated or very hard to um to, to be uh, treated so for example like bilateral vestibular party and uh, and normally, um, in, in case of like vestibular neuritis, labyrinthitis, mini disease, and post-surgical or post-concussion syndrome, this uh, can be uh, affects um, majority of one sites. All right. So when the vestibular dysfunctions or malfunctions, there are lots of unresolved conflicts, uh, other sensory conflicts, and you can see here, patient will have dizziness, with ego, and also disequilibrium, and here and, and here, that's why I'm saying vestibular rehabilitation therapy is a very, very important. And we are really need to have a good collaboration between the VR uh, between the our physiotherapy to help people to uh, to gain or to have their natural conversations, natural cerebral conversation. So this can lead to vertigo, dizziness, problem, problems, other symptoms. All right. So if you can go here in terms of management, because um, uh, as as we know that BPPV and I, I normally always teach or uh, always taught uh, my student where we have to when you have a vestibular disorder patient you need of course to know whether this is BPPV or non BPPV and if uh, non BPPV you should discriminate whether this is peripheral or central so this is much easy for you to narrow and to for you to guide or to have a proper diagnosis at the end also a proper and optimal management for example like BPPV here of course we do have a lots of inner repositioning maneuver and of course uh, you heard about gun CRM and compared to Apple when they say the, the current rate for gun CRM is much much lower compared to the Apple which is I think uh, I think it's good and also uh, well established or used in other country before and also labyrinthines concussion also we are always promoting to use vestibular rehab mini disease we are promoting a bad high dose beta histine low salt diets and also surgery and transtympathic gentamicin injection labyrinthitis also uh, for vestibular rehab in the long term but in the acute of course you can still give them uh, symptomatic relief for example like antimazolon cinerazine all right then therapeutic pistula vestibular neuritis so if you can see here um, majority of the vestibular disorder is actually the main or the best or optimal management is actually balance exercise and then there are only a few um vestibular disorder types that need pharmacological intervention and for example like anticholinergic antihistamine benzodiazepine that's i'm really practicing my whole clinics uh, i was in vertigo clinic in uc science in asia uh, since i think 2007 until now alhamdulillah and also a uh, calcium uh, channel antagonist and so GABA modulator so this is thing uh, some people used to use nootropic or piracetam which is vitamin b12 um 
how, how to become a B12. Some, some people love to do that. Uh, and then it's depend because they say in this can improve our cognitive functions and so on. So the most important thing here I want to emphasize is actually treatment to manage with tiger symptom, for example, like vestibular suppression, like maclizine, um, dihydrazepine, anti-emetic, you can use, but not more than two weeks because there's a lot of research shows that it's going to delay the natural cerebral conversation if the people persistent use this for more than one, two weeks or one month. So that's why proper uh, medication offered to patient is very, very important. And you should, I think, uh, we, we should explain. Uh, you should explain. All right. So, and and if you can see here, there, there will be um, vestibular patient, which is uh, BPPV and also a non BPPV. This is always I try to discriminate, and you can see here in the BPPV, we can use a lot of it depends anterior canal, posterior canal, or um, anterior canal, posterior canal, or uh, uh, lateral canal, horizontal canal. So, for example, like posterior canal, you do have lots of options like epi maneuver, you have gun canal repositioning maneuver that I love to use, and some people use semen maneuver. An anterior canal, which is you can use fascimen, and for the lateral canal, you can do slow test or what you call deep hanging test. So this is a deep hanging uh, maneuver. So all this thing is option for BPPV, but for non BPPV, for example, like post vestibular neuritis, post vestibular um, labyrinthitis, and recurrent vestibular fatigue, balance exercise should be started as soon as possible after the acute attack in every patient. All right. So if you can see here, this is uh, something like the uh, customized treatment option that we offer in BPPV and non-BPPV. So for example, like BPPV, as I mentioned before, and uh, even in my clinic, actually, I'm rarely used uh, brand uh, I'm, I'm I'm quite familiar with uh, GAN, CRN, and also uh, with Siemens also. And also before this, we are also using Apple, but after we heard that like gun CRM, the recovery rate, which is more, much more longer, which is some my patient came back to me after four or five years. So this is much better compared than Apple. Uh, I think some, some people will come back to you after uh, two years, something like that. And then also unilateral vestibular, there is a concept of adaptation, substitution or habituation. And also motion sensitivity, also uh, one of the uh, concept of common symptoms among vestibular disorder or what we call visual vertigo. You know, in, in, in current status in vestibular disorder, they will face some stage. This is what we call visual vertigo. And the concept that we are using is actually optokinetic stimulation. This is when you ask your patients to, uh, to focus on the lights moving. So at the end, they're going to be habituated. And then the, 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 the fourth one, this is what we call bilateral vestibular, vestibular loss. And this is uh, in substitution and also adaptation. And, and also uh, central vestibular, also the concept of habituation use in terms of the explanation of their uh, cerebral conversation. And in terms of vestibular rehab, I think the focus on priority uh, patient, you have to be uh, customized, not too rigid. You know, for example, here when I, you teach to ask your patients what's their main uh, problem or main difficulty. For example, in certain case, they don't like a moving object, something like fast moving object, for example, like car on the road, something like that. So at the same time, uh, you should think of the optokinetic stimulations where they need to focus to that uh, object or the lamp or the light and at the and they're going to habituate. And, and this is what we call client focus. You need to ask before and after the, and there's a lot of, I think, a questionnaire, there's a lot of assessment that normally use, for example, like we use foam and we use uh, here, uh, Malay version, which goes symptom school or what I go symptom skill. And also the management is actually based on restorations, adequate motor behavior by adjusting the input and output relationship of the VOR and VSR and restoration optimal functional independence. Okay, so before, um, if we are talking about vestibular rehabilitation exercise, there are a lot. And I think there's a lot of research shows that when you start to do exercise, you can, you should promote your patients to start with the head and neck surgery because there are a few research shows that when you are starting the movement with the head and neck, neck uh, movement is going to enhance or faster the cerebral conversations compared then you start, you start with the uh, postural stability or postural positional movement something like that so there are a lot i think in even in youtube or they, they show that what kinds of uh, the basic concept you can 
uh, realize we use uh, cotton kutsi exercise and then there is a customized cotton kutsi exercise and I will show you the next slide whereas our module we use balance exercise or what we call balak is a combination mm -hmm. of the um, combinations of the customized cotton kutsi exercise plus prayer movement all right so if you can see here treatment for vestibular hypofunction is actually uh, gaze stabilization exercise to coordinate eye and also head motion and also habituation exercise is actually to uh, enhance or to stimulate patients to become more tolerance of the movement and also standing uh, standing balance activity walking fitness and endurance with the tolerated so all these things is actually able to prevent from fall especially for those who are in aging people or elderly and also um, when we are talking about our rehabilitation exercises, actually able to encourage our vestibular adaptation and composition and the effectiveness of recovery um, from vertigo required natural reorganizations and adaptation. So how we want to promote the adaptation and composition here is actually this is the main issue. I mean, this is the most important part uh, in terms of to have a good recovery in our patient. Of course, in every patient, they really need for faster recovery. Even they have suffered for 10 years with ego, but they really hope they will suffer. They will improve after one week or two weeks. So this is really hard. So that's why you need to explain to your patient if they do the balance exercise very well, it should be fine. But if you are are not doing the balance exercise frequently and in a great uh, or perfect uh, movement, it's not going to be happen. So that's why uh, they there are several uh, research they investigate the sensory conflicts to promote the neural learning and also rehabilitation exercise up particularly actually uh, very, very uh, important in majority of vestibular disorder, all right? And then when you're talking about cerebral conversation, some people or some patients will ask you how, how long. It's depend. It's depend on patients. If they are uh, very disciplined or they are very uh, follow the protocol uh, movement and because I think uh, it's very hard to find home base, isn't it? But in our university, UC Science Malaysia, we do have our home base. This is what we call Balax. Balax, it was since uh, created since 2009 and it has been translated into 60 languages. So people can do at home because not everybody are able to come uh, to hospital for two times or three times per week. This is very hard. Some of them, they are very defaulted because there is no caregiver to accompany or to send them because in vertigo patient, normally they unable to drive on their own, they have some difficulty to walk and especially for AGP. So if you can see here, chronic vertigo and steadiness associated with PVD, peripheral vestibular disorder, will improve over 6 to 12 weeks. A results, um, uh, a results of cerebral conversation. So cerebral conversation happen is actually habituations or adjustment of the CNS to change in thickness from peripheral vestibular disorder. And also there are also, there are also sensory substitution. Uh, CNS relies, uh, release on their balance organ. For example, like they are shifting to other vision, uh, normal uh, functions of the vision, as well, normal functions of the proprioception. So this is most of the concepts that we are uh, understood from the natural process of the cerebral conversation. And in some patients, if you can look, they are complain of neck pain and neck stiffness. And this is one of the common side effects since movement causes a dizziness. Therefore, patients tend to avoid head movement. For uh, patients, uh, for patient heat, soft tissue mobilizations, joints mobilization, stretching, stretching, postural re-education. So this is uh, a few uh, options that you can offer in that uh, pain or stiffness patient. Apart from that, apart from, uh, some people will ask, what uh, type of balance exercise? Yes, you can do anything. There's a lot of options, for example, like standing uh, balance, balance exercise, walking, yoga, tai chi. And now I think I heard in India, normally they use a trampoline. You know, trampoline. But the most important thing, the concept in balance exercise, actually, you should you should do the exercise during eye open and eye close. Eye open, eye close, and then you have to increase the speed from slow to faster and more faster. So this is the most important concept. For example, your patients having some problem with head and neck problem. They start spinning in balance when they're turning their head. So the most the starting exercise is actually they just need to do exercise 
to turn their head right, left, right, left slowly. If I open, for example, like 20 times and they repeat with the 20 time post and then they are getting faster and faster. So indication for therapy is actually is a loss for, for example, like in unilateral vestibular neuritis, uh, Labyrinthitis, something like that, and also flat threatening. Uh, and there is some issue actually in flat threatening vestibular uh, problem, for example, like mini disease. And in perianthetic fistula, uh, there are a few research shows that balance exercise can improve or can give benefits to this group of patients uh, in certain in chronic cases. And also post traumatic vertigo, also and also multifactorial uh, disquibrium of the elderly. And also, if, if you heard about mal debarkment syndrome, also uh, balance exercise is one of the good options for an optimal management. And psychogenic vertigo also shows some benefit if you are combining with the uh, balance exercise. So, what I'm talking now is actually uh, examples of a disease or pathology that can benefit from balance exercise and, and also like acoustic neuroma cases, stroke, post-stroke patient and as you agree, 80% post-stroke people or even their uh, cure, they will have a balance problem and post-head injury or concussion, history of inner ear problem in and diabetic patient. All right. If you can see here uh, in terms of mild department syndrome, uh, there are quite common, uh, their feelings on board, you know, so uh, I'm quite frequent use or offered balance exercise in uh, among this group and and um, some people are talking about combination therapy yes you can do in especially in in those who are in very acute attack you can start or combine with beta histine with the exercise and then you slowly uh, drop down so if you can see here there are uh, types or I mean chronicity of every disease is uh, what we call a difference. So it can be temporary, changeable, permanence, or some some of them are unknown. So, but if you can see from this chart, I don't know whether you can see very clearly here. And whatever is actually the extent of potential improvement is actually depends on rehabilitation. Uh, so rehabilitation. So how how much you do rehab, how frequent and how correct you do uh, rehabilitation is the most important outcome for your balance exercise in every patient. So as I mentioned before, there are lots of type of balance exercise. For example, like Carlton's Putsi exercise, customized Carlton Putsi exercise from London, I think by Mauricio Paula and Professor Adolfo Bronstein. And then also Balax. Balax is actually one of the combinations, home-based video module for balance exercise, uh, combination of customized uh, CCE plus prayer movement, uh, Muslim prayer movement. And also, there's a lot of options like VV game, but it's a bit costly. And optokinetic simulation, for example, like disco room and something like that. And and as I said, uh, Nintendo VV game and trampoline also can be a very helpful in terms of uh, balance exercise. And I, I think into a stick, for example, like I'm not from this company or whatever, but I heard that they have a very good, uh, you know, um, balance rehab, something like that. And then this is also, they have optokinetic stimulation. So this is good. Anything which is the more challenge, you should remember in balance exercise, the more challenge you give to patient, the more faster the recovery. For example, they are, if, for example, if you are asked patient to sitting on the ball, close their eye, move their head and what if it, they, they lose their proprioception so this is much be a good and much be better uh, outcome in patients so this is my uh, team actually for balance exercise which is um, this is my uh, professor Dean, one of the prof and also they, they he is one of the the one that uh, involved in this balax team of balance exercise um, uh, balloon exercise um, product. So actually, I really thankful to all my lecturer and teacher in National Hospital, uh, Neurology and Neurosurgery when I was there in Central London on 2006. And then this is all uh, our balax. Uh, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm putting my, my topic here is actually update on latest innovation on balloon exercise because we do have 15 uh, focus product for balance and also stroke patient. For example, like you can see here, uh, you can see the you can see the slide. I think uh, we do have almost seventeen product, and um, if you can see here, we started with the home based balai. This is mainly for uh, balance disorder patient, and we do have balai stroke, which is for stroke patient, and we do have rotary chair. But our rotary chair is not diagnostic, but it's only for rehab because we are putting inside the optokinetic room and we spin. 
So that's why what I'm saying, the more challenge you give to patient, the more faster recovery. And the fourth product we do have is actually Balat Stand Up. This is very simple and safe because they have a gun and we use a car tube. We use car tube with a certain amount of air when people or when patients sitting on the car tube, the the, the, the pressure inside the car tube are changeable. So that's why people feel very unstable, but they have a specific protocol. And this is a quite a good, uh, I think, one of the fastest recovery where people can do uh, guided because they have a screen that they will uh, follow, they will do the exercise consecutively. And then we do have also, this is called effective uh, wheelchair. We have stroke. Uh, shoes for stroke patient and this is our Balax uh, mobile which were room. This is what we call uh, we developed uh, to since 2014 This is uh, like a uh, room dark room covered by a uh, curtain dark curtain and we do have a disco room and people have to sit there one hour per session By we have a protocol also what they need to do inside the room and they have to focus to the lens object and normally we, we, we prescribe them a back plastic for vomiting because basically in the beginning we will have vomiting and so on and also we do have balat physio this is a guided for physiotherapist and only for stroke patient and we do have our own balat optokinetic drum I believe I think lots of you also have that and apart from that our TENS product is actually what we call automatic balance evaluation rehabilitation so this is also the concept they use car tube but this is for rehab and also we are now uh, still in developing process for the assessment it's not really like osteography kind of but this is more to the rehabilitation and also we do have our foam this is what we call ballet foam that we use for assessment for before and after therapy and also we use also for rehab and we this is our latest this is what we call ballet quick balance that it was i think i i i undergone the result research is almost nine years or ten years for this and when i create a model why i say quick balance because people can improve within one week because they have a very intensive we they do the combinations of the balax and i mean customized cotton cushy they do uh, combinations of the optokinetic they do exercise on trampoline they do exercise on uh, foam so this is a very uh, challenging but people can get a uh, much or better outcome because I do have a lot of international patients came down to Malaysia for example like from Indonesia and so on and so that's why I always offer my patient but I quit balance because they should stay with us for three days and they underwent very intensive rehab like for example like two sessions per day or one session for chronic people all right then we do have balai svvt this is uh, for subjective visual vertical and subjective visual horizontal and now actually we are now in stage of developing balai quick balance skeleton tracking this is much more fun when you can do exercise at home in the screen and there is a icon that follow and they can instruct you whether your movement is correct or not and also, we do have a dance because, you know, sometimes people, they feel bored when they do uh, exercise. So dance is one of the options. Also, we do have English version only and also Malay version. And we do have also silent stroke. This is what we call balai silent stroke child. And also, the last one, we do have a balai solat. Uh, this is for, for therapy, for balance, but we use uh, totally 100% um, prayer movement. So you can see here, and so this is uh, what we call um the the room the optokinetic room that we normally practice in our patients and sometimes we use ball people have to sit on a ball and they have to sit to the light uh, and sometimes we give them sound therapy and see therapy and it feel much more uh, real and they they the, the, to avoid them from sleep and something like that. So the more light used, the more faster um, moving object is much more better. So this is our balax, which is home base. What I'm saying because home base, they can do at home with a very simple because in this uh, model, we have a CD, we have a brand book and we do have a poster. And the most interesting one, we do have 16 languages, which is we do have Tamil, Hokkien, Mandarin, Arabic. And I think we do have in uh, Urdu, Sin, and this is uh, very simple. They have uh, audio, they have, you know, uh, guided everything. And it's safe because normally there is instructions there when they do have a chest pain, something like that, they should do ECG, something like that. All right. So, and Alhamdulillah, actually last year I, I was in Bosnia and Turkey. 
um, and balai is actually used in Bosnia and Turkey as their uh, balance assessment and rehabilitation protocol in their country. And I really hope uh, in also in future, other countries also can benefit from this model because this is home base. And the video that I, I cannot show here, but uh, we, we, we supply in, you know, uh, in online version, something like that. But you should contact me in the be um, in behind, all right? So, so for example, like here, actually we do have our, our grant. It's almost uh, 100,000 Malaysia. We use, we compact the, the Balai's model, which is with prayer movement and without prayer movement, which is a customized particular C. And it shows um, in terms of... Uh, in terms of it's seen a good psychological changes happen uh, in patients that using a model with prior movement compared to the non prior movement. All right, so this is a for example of our form, then Balak Creek Balance, which is they have a protocol. This is the example of the protocol. There's a step. This is only a few steps. They have almost like 30, more than 30 movements, what they can do or what they should do while they are standing on this form. All right. So, uh, if you ask me, I will say I really uh, practice. I really, really love and recommend the Balai Creek Balance because you can get a very faster recovery. People normally stay with in my clinic with me. For example, if they came all over from overseas, they need to stay at least three to four days. And Alhamdulillah, when they back, normally they will be back uh, with seventy percent or sixty percent. It depend. It depend on their commitment to do the exercise. So there is a lots of. Uh, uh, benefit is actually it's not really expensive and okay. we have a protocol provided non-physio can do if you are trained properly doctor all right so this is our mm -hmm. yes i'm almost I, done yes i just want to say that it may cut off because we're almost up of time so in case it happened i want to just make sure okay, that yeah, I thank yeah. you and i'll give you the continue thank you yeah, thank you so much. So it's very thing. So this is all the thing actually. I, this is all the picture actually. All the achievement. Alhamdulillah, I think I have done this innovation fifteen or seventeen product, and I awarded more than forty four gold medal international and international. That doesn't matter. But the most important thing is actually for me. Um, we can share. We can share. And and the last word for me is actually when you have a vestibular patient, balance exercise is the most important thing. You, I'm, I'm not saying, or I'm not uh, ban the medication everything, no, but you should, but you should emphasize in your patient, uh, for example, like medication, like anti-suppression is not really good if they use more than two weeks or something like that. So that's why, um, uh, what we call the, what we call the proper advice and 